Welcome back, so let's see what's up with Frank. Yeah, let's see what's up with the Illuminati. Dude, it smells like piss in here. Shut up. You have a rough night or something? I said shut up. Every night's a rough night. I've got a notebook in the back somewhere. Go get it for me, would you? The last thing I need is you screaming at me when I have a hangover. Then we'll talk. <laughs> All right. In the meantime, we also. Oh. Frank, okay. how low can I go? Oh, uh, actually, actually, Chloe, you can go way lower than that. The, this isn't uh, yeah. fetching fetching things for Frank ain't that bad in all, in the grand scheme of this of things in this series. To be honest with you, you uh, know, sitting down. <laughs> you know something's wrong when fetching things for a drug dealer is not the lowest point in your life. But yeah, no, let's not forget Chloe becomes dumber in the future game. Let's not forget, she blatantly ignores advice from her time-traveling friend who she knows can know the future Dude, before her. I heard her, you got expelled. takes extra convincing. Bad news. You mean good news? I'm stoked. Word. I'm home too. I finally got busted yesterday for smelling like weed. My mom's making me go to her book group. Oh, man. Yeah, books are not cool. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Frank. I didn't know it was your RV when I wrote that. So yeah, hello. You're not definitely not a meth lab, and you're totally not interested. So I guess, well, at least Matt doesn't. At, at least um, Frank doesn't seem like his mad. Oh, and grocery list. Mm, work or home? Mm, what to pick? Home. I don't even know what the option home means, but let's see what she writes. She wrote, oh, her, his van on fire. Very nice, Chloe. Um, yeah. These graffiti, fire her girlfriend started. These graffiti, this graffiti collectible is pretty lame, all things considered. So basically, Shuri, what you're saying is, Rachel started the fire. The heart was burned. Well, yeah. Well, 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 actually, Jova. To be honest, I'm the truth. Jova, Jova. Uh, actually, Jova, yes, because remember, this game keeps ramming the whole Rachel is like. Oh my god, you're so puppy. Hey, there you go, Pumpadoo. Oh, see there you go. Puppy back there. So there you go, Pumpadoo from the first game, but uh, young, four years before. That is literally adorable, but yes, you're right, you're saying? And yeah, it looks- I, said, I literally can't hear that song without and, the parody, you can't fight the Homestucks and, version. And, and Pompadou yeah. Pompadou still looks better than the Lightning Returns doggo. Um, I mean, to be fair, this game came out on the on system ahead, and like, a few years after. Yeah, but on an yeah, indie no. budget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, let's be honest, James, way lower budget than a flipping Final Fantasy game. Anyway. From the same oh, no. company, mind oh, you. Well, oh, publisher. Wasn't that, but... that on the lower budget, too? Uh, still a higher budget than an indie budget. And again, a Final Fantasy game. Like, you know, literally Square Enix's flagship franchise. In the meantime, uh, Elliot just sent us some texts because he's worried about us being expelled. He said that he's here for us and all that good shit. And Chloe's like, it's okay, I'm not bothered by this. It's kind of a lose-lose situation, Dwibs. Either A, they got outdone by an indie company, or B, Square Enix actually gave a game from their flagship franchise yeah. literal pittance also, in Jova, terms of game fun. Also, Jova, your joke works either way, because it works already anyway, because when the, this game keeps rhyming, the whole Rachel is like the f it's as, as alluring as the fire metaphor down our throats. It's like, not only that, but... You know, again, it's funny how you compared Rachel to the Joker in a previous part. Even now. Huh, that would mean that Bruce's Rachel became the Joker. Do I look like I speak fucking French? Then why would you uh, give your dog a French name? Okay, so... And I remember, Chiwa, he wasn't the one that named the dog. Remember, we have learned in the first game that uh, his previous owner was kind of shit and treated him badly. Um... Yeah. Okay, so we can once again uh, abuse Frank to get him to tell us more about that woman. So let's do that. To her credit, she's doing this to help Rachel, so fair game. So here's my question. If Chloe was this resourceful, 
why is she not as resourceful in, you know... The first game. The first Life is Strange game. Again, may I remind you, Max is like 85 at yeah. least percent in fact, in fact, there are plenty of times in the, in the original game where I, where I think Chloe's ability to do this would have been very useful. And yet somehow she never does any of this. So again, Chloe... Sorry, go on, Shuri. I like how this diagram is basically the verbal abuse diagram right here. The yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's the whole point, Shuri. Right? Uh, do you no, want... I, I know, it's just weird to say, it's like, they made a diagram for this. <laughs> yeah. Sure, 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 sure. This, this, this is the game that turns verbal abuse into an art form. <laughs> you know what I just realized? Again, bardic inspiration. <laughs> no, not bardic just... inspiration. Fuck. You know what I realized? It's just Go on, Jova. This is a poor... This is a poor man's chess mechanic from Ace Attorney Investigations 2, when you think Yeah, I'm gonna have to say, I'm gonna have to say the rewind mechanic of the original game was more interesting. This mechanic is not interesting. Especially, okay, Again, it, it, like it could have been fun if the writing had bite to it, but it doesn't. You know what's a real missed opportunity here? Like, okay, one of the problems with this game being a prequel is like, well, okay, if... Okay, if, like, your choice is mattering is already a problem in Telltale's games, imagine how much of a problem that is in a prequel. Because, think about it, your choices can only matter so much in a prequel to affect a game that's already happened. Yeah. So... The whole know. idea of making so, up... Really? Sorry, go on. Here's what I would have done, though. Maybe what you do is have it that... Okay, so in one case, you try and play things and characters so that they do line up with the original Life is Strange. Fair enough. However, here's an interesting idea. What if, per se, a player tries to go all Metal Gear Solid 3 and goes to a point where things end on a relatively happy note to the point where, you know, it would create a time paradox? Well, imagine. What if you actually got an insinuation that you trying to change things is what makes Chloe the anomaly? Imagine if, per se, the reason she is fated to die in the original Life is Strange game is because her actions ended up messing with how time was supposed to go based off of, you know, whatever the choices you made in this game were. And that would explain why she's linked to the storm in the first game. Yeah, and it also gives players a perfect reign to just go wild with the choices and actually have it matter in a sense. Okay, so to recap, basically Frank wants us to do some favor for him, and if we do this favor, we'll he'll for, he'll forgive our debt of money to him. Yeah, but apparently, remember Drew, that guy who was bullying Nathan? Turns out he's also kind of a drug dealer, a mini drug dealer of his own. And apparently he owes um, someone uh, money too, so our, our goal is to go and get the money from him. He owes a grand. Oh boy. Uh, he's an unreliable douchebag. No, this is the first time he's done this. Kids oh. Anyway, yes, it turns out it's the first time he's done it. Puzzling, is it not? Find the money, and I'll meet you to pick it up. Can you handle that? Yeah, of course, but what's in it for me? Idiot, you still owe me. Wasn't it kind of obvious so that this would be how you pay I off your this, debt, Chloe? Chloe's not very smart, Jove. I think we've already established this. Again, she apparently gets dumber by the first game. Special mention does go to the fact that she does not believe the friend that she knows can time travel. I'm sorry I keep coming to that, but that was literally What's just forced man? drama, which, I'm no, no. sorry, made Chloe look like an idiot. Well, yeah. But as you can see for this game, she doesn't need Max to make herself look like an idiot. She can, she does that all the time. This morning. Honestly, I'm wondering now if the only reason she thinks Max ghosted her is because she was too dumb to actually, you know, properly check for the backlog. A hundred dollars closer to leaving Arcadia Bay. With a bit of cash. No, again, what I have to ask, even if Max really did ghost her, why? Like, Max has never really shown anything to suggest that she would want to ghost Chloe, so, like, why? It's stupid. It's just, uh, 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 it's, um, like, I get that they're trying to work off of the first game, because the first game didn't specify anything about 
them possibly keeping in touch but they can't say that they kept in touch because that was that would basically heavily contra heavily make the, the first game even more nonsensical you know um so they, they shouldn't have, should, they should have just ignored it. they should have just not at all addressed the fact that they, they didn't keep in touch you're like don't address it don't bring attention to it because all you're doing is putting yourself in a much harder position as a writer is this about max uh no yeah. basically show it to recap um we were able to get out of frank that the woman's name is sarah also uh frank can give us a proposal uh remember drew the bully who was uh, you know messing with nathan turns out he's also kind of a drug dealer himself and he owes money to some people so the idea is that we're gonna go get some money from him and if we do that our debt to frank is repaid also yeah. max we were just discussing how this game kind of feels like a case of damned if you do damned if you don't being a prequel to the original oh that gets cool again they've got some tents for dressing rooms so what are you up to I'm here oh, to sorry, actually running an errand for my dealer. Oh really? So bad. Come see me when you're done? Yeah, for sure. You doing bad things turns me on. Yes, I saw that woman that your dad was with coming out of my dealer's RV. What? Apparently she's causing trouble for a lot of people or something. Her name's Sarah? Rachel? I think maybe I prefer not knowing her name. Oh, my bad. No, it's fine. See you soon. Please, don't you, for the don't love you see, of God, do Rachel. not set that woman on fire, Rachel. Rachel, I'm uh, no, sorry, S uh, Chloe. Y you shouldn't give me her name. Once I know her name, I start getting attached to her. Oh wait. No. Is that why her last name's Am? <laughs> oh, Steph. No. Hey, best. I'm going to set. I'm going to set her on fire. Hold on, guys. Steph, best character. <laughs> You're sure it looks like the tea leaves they used to tell people's fortunes. How is my future looking? And guess what? We're also going to learn um... something. <laughs> I told you anyway, yes, Pedro. We're also going to learn something new about Steph, so check this out. I don't normally get involved in other people's dumb decisions. Smart girl. Thanks yep. for trying, but skipping yesterday was totally Can we play a Steph, please? Skipping with Rachel Amber does have an appeal. Well, yeah. So, what are you doing here? I'm just picking up something from uh, somebody. It's for a friend. Now I'm really curious. What are you doing? What's all this stuff? I'm prepping for the Tempest show tonight. I'm the stage manager. Oh. Oh boy, right. the Tempest show. Uh, I think I knew that. Honestly, the show's really good. It's worth seeing. Anyway, sure um. Is. My point earlier is like, I feel like this game is hindered by being a prequel to Life is Strange for a multitude of reasons. It can't spread its wings as much as it might want to because it needs to stay within the confines of Life is Strange. Yet, I'll give them credit, I do feel like they are trying to do their best with He's well, okay, you know what? They're fans of it, so they don't Calvin see it as a bad situation. So However, right. I still yeah. do think it is, a, at the very mm -hmm. least, a very limiting situation. It's kind of like when Edgar that Winter made an album maybe on maybe behalf of L. Ron Hubbard. Ah, hold on. Yes, that L. This is the bit. <laughs> Shoot. I've been planning to make a move on Rachel, but not if you two were together. Oh, my... Trust me, uh, as, as like sure I would say, she's not worth it. Uh, uh, do that. Business. Just don't do it. Just. Yours no, she's actually but kind of a psychopath. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Steph, you, uh, Steph, you deserve better. Don't don't go for Rachel, Steph, please. <laughs> oh my God, dwibs. Dwibs. Yeah. The problem was never yeah. Bruce. It was Rachel all along. Now that I think about it. Uh, and uh, don't uh, just leave it alone, Steph. Like Chloe and Rachel are 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 much better together because they're they're both as terrible as the other. So just get yourself get yourself a woman that actually is worthy of you. Our relationship is complicated. <laughs> if by complicated you mean incredibly toxic and is going to pretty much drag both of us to our inevitable deaths, then yes, complicated. 
<laughs> but yeah, no, seriously, Dwibs. If we consider it that this is actually Rachel from Batman Begins and she just faked her death in here, that would really explain the messed up shenanigans she gets up in in that in Dark Knight. All right. Well, basically, Joe, what you're saying is, um, she'll either die from being uh, blown up, or she will die from a um, crazy photographer person. So yeah. Both well, just an you know, insane person. Uh, Gone, or you know, you you and could do subject. either of those things, but you could also do neither and go and ask uh, your friend over there to borrow her keys, because you know she is a student here and would have keys to this dorm probably. Bingo. That's a good point. Sure. Sure. But but sure, don't you see? We need a puzzle for the player to solve. I'm going. Okay. But <laughs> I'm going to assume that Chloe doesn't want to get her involved in case she might get in trouble. However, hey, to be fair, that is something that I inferred from the story and not something stated outright. So for all we know, Chloe just ain't being bright. Okay, so Samuel, he either, he's, it's either the same voice actor or it's a very convincing sound alike. Because it pretty much sounds the same to me. Um... Okay, uh, to address sh what Shira was saying, yeah, that's the thing about adventure games. Okay, see, in adventure games, uh, you have to have puzzles for the player to solve. Otherwise, the gameplay is literally just go f going from point A to point B with nothing in between. So you have to have puzzles so that the gameplay has some kind of thing to it, you know? But the thing is, you have to... You have to visual novel. Well, that too, but... Um, the, the basic idea is that, okay, when you have your puzzles, you need to do a good job in contextualizing the puzzles uh, in the story. Um, but yeah, a lot of times the characters will not act uh, the way that anyone normally would uh, for the sake of, you know, having a puzzle. It's the same thing with... Um, uh, see, the thing is, sure, I get the feeling what they're trying to do, sure, is trying to do a throwback to the first game. Remember, in the first game, we had to do a, solve a puzzle involving paint to get Victoria and her groupies out of the way, so we can go into the, the dorm. So, this is... Yeah, but they were, like, blocking the stairs. This is just, like, yeah. she just needs a key. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Here's what would have helped this. If we just added a line about Chloe so, saying that she doesn't want to get her involved because she might get in trouble given how Chloe is, you know, trying to do some drug pushing overall, essentially. Yeah. So, adding in that line would have explained this, and there, we need a puzzle, fine. I think also what's missing from this game is like, we'll see, Life is Strange had the benefit of the time travel here, to the point where you could come up with multiple reasons of why there's a puzzle here. Like, maybe Max just wants to reverse time, test time out stuff here and there. Like, uh, I'm not going to act like it was a crutch, but it definitely made stuff a lot easier to justify. Whereas, you know, here, things aren't exactly as simple, ironically. Or, arguably, they are more simple, but in a way that kind of makes this game stand out less. And yet, how weird is it that... I can arguably find myself getting more enjoyment out of this game than the first Life is Strange game. For me, it's one of those things. For me, it's one of those things where the first the, this game doesn't have the ableism and the incredible misuse of, of of other themes as well. This game is just bad in a generic way. It, it doesn't have that incredible atro atrocious aspect. Uh, that the first game has. That's the, that's the funny thing about that, though. We know she ends up that way, so I'm still kind of here like, yeah, I don't like you, sorry. And, <laughs> and again, and again, sure, to add on to the irony, it's the gamer we're playing as Chloe that is not nearly as inferior oh. he did. Oh, you thought, you, you thought that puzzle was interesting? Sure, check out this out. So now we have to get Evan out of the way. Yeah, this is Evan. If you forgot who Evan is, he's that guy with the text photos that Max in the first game called her his photos Uber Pro. Um, so yeah, the idea is that uh, he's trying to take a photo of this bird, so we have to get this bird away so that we can break the sprinkler so we can get uh, Sam distracted. Thing is, uh, that means we have, for some reason, the bird, even if we scare it, it won't fly away. It will only fly in between these very specific spots marked with bird seed. Um, okay, so we have to try to get the bird out uh, as we can like so let's see maybe we can get him um, there let's see 
And that's not that's not the direction that I was pointing game. Like, And yeah, as that, you can as you can see when you Chloe, uh, Chloe, did you just describe her life in general? And yeah, as you can see when you put the bird in the position you're not supposed to, Chloe will tell you via monologue. Almost there. Wow. She fucked the bird at the bird. Wow, how riveting. Chloe is in a battle of wits with a bird. Yeah. There you go. It's still not as embarrassing as trying to watch Fayfish. <laughs> Damn. All right. And there you go. And now let's break the sprinkler. Like Beavis would say, <laughs> damage is cool. Oh no! <laughs> Look here, the sprinkler is about to break itself. Oh no, Whoopsie. I tripped over it. <laughs> now I just have to wait for Samuel to turn on the... <laughs> that works. Oh no, um, I, um, I kicked something and it broke. Not my problem. Actually, Sam, it kind of is your problem. You're supposed to... No, I'm saying that as Chloe. Yeah. Um, anyway, though, back to what I was saying earlier. These developers working with source material for Life is Strange feels a bit like Edgar Winter when he made that uh, album for L. Ron Hubbard. Yes, that L. Ron Hubbard, called Mission to Earth. Sorry, which, okay, was him trying to make the best out of some terrible lyrics written by, again, the same mm. L. Ron Hubbard who wrote such wonderful it. classics as Battlefield Earth. Yeah. And he ironically managed to make some good-sounding music with them, and he did his best to make those lyrics sound good. That said, overall the album was a failure, but a noble failure. I think, in a way, I can see this game in a similar sense to that. Now, mind you, Whereas Life is Strange is the kind of bad that got so bad that, no, I could literally get mad at it. This is just the kind of bad where I laugh at how stupid it is. Yeah. Like, okay, the lack of ableism definitely helps. And ironically, this game seems to be much more aware of, you know, Chloe's problems being actual problems that she can't just blame oh. on other And guess what, guys? Okay. Uh, we're about to justify why this guy is no longer the, secure, the head of security in the first game and why David is in there. So, uh, we're about to use the verbal abuse thingy to try to convince Skip to let us into the boys dorm. Um, this is actually the one time I, in the playthrough where I do fail. Um, the verbal abuse thing. See, uh, and which uh, this gives me an opportunity to explain my problem with the, the verbal abuse minigame diagram thingy. See, here's the thing about this. The idea, according to the games, that we're supposed to pick lines that are related to what the character said. Thing is, a lot of, in the, uh, sometimes the lines don't really relate to what the character said to begin with. Like, for example, let's see what he says next. What? Yeah. Okay. It's my job to ask. Okay, what does this... Okay, you're going to lose your job. Not cool, Skip. Your job is creepy. I don't really think that... You know, you know I, I picked one that involves job that's related to what he just said, and yet, there you go, I lost. So which is the game? Do I pick lines that are related to what the character said or not? I don't understand. Like, that's this is this is how the tutorial taught me in the first one back at the beginning of the game, so what gives? Go ahead. I think the idea is to probably analyze each situation the best and see which one will work out overall. Well, but that's the thing, though. Like, uh, unless I know the script beforehand, how do I know what's the exact specific line? Because a lot no, of... No, 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 no. I mean, it's like, well, to analyze the situation and, I guess, make your best judgment. And I suppose, to be fair, it's a bout of trial and error. Oh, I'm yeah, I have to point this out. Gonna... Okay, check this out. Us trying to abuse Skip here makes him go nuts. As you're... There you go. It's just this up. I'm so tired of being shit on by high schoolers. You know what? what? I'm done. I'm done with this Whoa. stupid renegade. Okay, okay, this came out of nowhere. What the fuck? Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This hold is on, how hold. he leaves his job. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Pedro. Are you sure you failed the situation? It, that looks like oh. a success. Oh, no, no, no. That's a thing, Joe. If you, even if you fail, the game just moves on. Like, you don't actually have to win these. Well, uh, okay, okay, okay. So what do you consider a success or failure? Because technically you still progress, so... Well, yeah, but I still want to win the minigame if, I, you know, I still wanted to win it. 
Yes, that's what I'm asking, though. What do you consider, like, winning it? Uh, you know, I don't know, getting the specific bit of dialogue that you get by winning the minigame? Maybe as that effectively is... effectively abusive as possible. Honestly, I'm wondering if that is the dialogue you get for winning either way still. Possibly, but, um, that, ladies and gentlemen, Chloe tried to pull a fast one on him, and this somehow makes him immediately get fed up with the world and just quits. Like, he rage quits his job like that. Like, Okay, so honestly, I think, like, technically you did still win that conversation. That's just his reaction to it. Like, I mean, hey, he quit his job, so technically isn't that a win in Chloe's book? <laughs> That's the thing. Oh, God. Uh, sure, I get that, Joe, but I'm more concerned with this. So you, let me get this straight. You have your job here as a security head, as a head of security, and you rage quit your job just because... Uh, so, uh, 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 a high schooler uh, was trying to pull a fast one on you, and uh, I get that he says, "Oh, I'm I'm sick and tired of being shit on by high school." So apparently, this is a thing that a lot of students make fun of him or something. Even so, dude, it's your job. Don't you need your Don't you need your the money you get? Like, so I've interpreted this as one of two ways: either one, he quit his job outright in a hilarious fashion. Or two, he's just looking the other way because he doesn't give a crap anymore, but somebody reports him and that's how he loses his job. Either way, he's out of there eventually. Basically, yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly, that is a good point, though. Like, I'm sorry, people are usually... Oh, hold on, Jeff. Oh, you know what? This is, uh, right now, we're in um, uh, Elliot's dream room. Let's see what he says. When she left the room, it was electric. Flush twinks. I see her in the brick and mortar, in the fresh-cut grass. Eyes flashing bright like coins. The fair men can have her, I say. But the dark gods laugh. Hmm. Yeah. Who, who is he talking about? That moment when... That moment when the sun is almost here to seize Buckham and Warren who pulled out when, when shape was called infinite. When for a moment only this possible, I'll say yes. My heart says yes. Her eyes say yes. Hmm, so this is kind of a love letter of sorts. Hmm, let's see what the next page says. Elliot is way more artistic. They see her but don't see her. How is that so when all the world is negative and dark and she cries out, a screaming rocket? Okay, dude, learn some writing skills because your writing makes no sense. You are about to die? What the fuck? How childish it is? How lovely and how cruel? Her black knife spilling words and dripping. So there you go. Um, this is Elliot's idea of a love letter to Chloe. I okay, okay, okay. To his credit, I think I did sense a bit of iamic pentameter in there, so maybe he did do that improper poetry and all that. Again, oh. not all poetry is done via rhyming. There are some done with a couple oh. of syllables and Jobba. whatnot. So. Jobba, Jobba, I could care less about the rhyming. Why is a supposed love letter have a, a, drip, a blood dripping knife with the words you are about to die in it? Okay, to be fair, uh, he wrote that in his journal, so I don't think that's a love letter. I think that's just him writing poetry. Oh, but Since, that's a again, Chloe calls him artistic, so yeah. I'm assuming she's referring to his poetry there. Well, yeah, but... Because it... if it were a love letter, surely he would have had that on, like, something that's not in the journal. Well, but that's the thing. He talks about her eyes, and when you check the final page, Chloe even monologues saying, Wait, is he writing about me? So I guess we're yes, supposed yes, to yes, interpret yes, this yes, as yes. a... Yes, yes, he's writing about her in poetry. That's not necessarily a love letter. I guess it's just it okay, makes him come off as a, letter, so it makes him kind of come off as a creep, I, though. <laughs> okay, if he were writing it as a love letter, to her, don't you think he would have said, as in it talking more to her as opposed to talking about her? I guess. Like, uh, Why does that make me I guess, sure. Uh, what do you think, Shirai? It's, uh, I'm also more on the camp of it's just poetry. Whether it's good or not, I don't know. I, I, I don't. That like being said, that being said, she like, keep that in mind, because believe it or not, that was foreshadowing for later. Um, well, if it was about Chloe, I was going to say her multiple deaths in the future. Well, I know, right? surprise, <laughs> su surprisingly, Joy, sorry, surprisingly, she is not that. Uh, I wonder if it was originally supposed to be, but again, given how this game is cut quite uh, short, yeah, you're starting to see yeah, you're starting to see what I mean. We're basically doing stuff, kind of rehashing the first game now. Remember, we're breaking into Drew's room just like we broke into Nathan's room in the first game. Yeah, we're kind of 
rehashing yeah. things now. <laughs> and remember, just like in the first game, we had to go to Frank for some favor and an information. Why do these and... students not have locks on their doors? <laughs> so what did I, uh, what did I miss in regards to the security guard? Basically, the security what? guard rage quit his job just because Chloe was mean to him. I'm not kidding, by the way. He lost his income right now, his money income, just because... Either he's he he just, 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 just because, as he put it, he's tired of high schoolers shitting on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah don't get me, happened. don't get me wrong. Jobs can be frustrating, but dude, you need that moolah. <laughs> like seriously, like. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just like it's. Uh, uh, it feels like such a oh gotta gotta get Skip fired because you know David is the head of security in the first game. Okay, yeah, but that doesn't mean he has to get fired here. You can just make an argument. Maybe he's somewhere in between games, gets fired or leaves or something. Like you don't like it, that came up. That, that was one of the things that they chose to be blatant about. Yeah, it yeah, was. Well, yeah, well, that's the but that's the thing though. Um, sometimes with games like this. And doing that other one, if they just if they just left it like that, people would say, "Oh, but how come he's not the guard in this game? You didn't explain shit." Deck Knight sucks. One, one, one exclamation mark. Yeah, and the and the I answer mean, to that would be there's four years in between both games. A lot of shit. You can just say that a lot of shit happened in between. Like, only what like this. It's entertaining to me for how silly it is. Though part of me wonders if they were trying to say something deeper with that, but it just fell flat on their faces. Because, yeah. honestly, that's kind of this game in a nutshell. It wants to say some deep things, and to its credit, it does succeed more in that regard than the original Life is Strange game did. But it still fails a lot. In the meantime, um... In the meantime, uh, Dwebs, uh, we also had a moment where Elliot is writing poetry about Chloe. And for whatever reason that still baffles me, there's a drawing of a blood dripping knife on it with the words you are about to die in it. I'll kill you. <laughs> uh okay. Well, I mean I mean she I mean she does die, but um... Alright, so then next part everybody, where my comment in part zero about the the writers claiming that they wanted to be emotionally honest because being frivolous would be irresponsible. What you're about to see in the next part, everybody, is one of the most irresponsible moments in writing I've seen in a game. So oh, no. no, 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 not 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 in the way you're thinking, Shira. It's more in terms of tone rather than the actual content. Okay, I see. See you for the next part, everybody. Yeah. See ya. Mm -hmm.